Alright people, I am back once again. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Top 10 decks of the July 2015 TCG format. So, not much has changed. You know, this list was booty. It was one of the worst ban lists I've ever seen. But hey, you know, last July wasn't much better. I mean, what? They hit like one card of the top deck and, you know, brought back a, a ban synchro monster, i.e. being Goya Guardian. This time it's Trish, so it's literally the exact same list from a year ago. You know, uh, Stu brought that to my attention. I was like, you know what? You're exactly right. So, no surprise there. Anyway, new list. I'm going to go ahead and do my top 10. But don't be surprised if there's not a lot of changes. So, like I said, these are just my opinion. If you guys uh, have any other opinions, you know, you guys can go ahead and post your 10 in the comment section below. But I'm just going to go ahead and do my 10. I'm not going to take too long on this video because not much has changed. So, we'll go ahead and start off with number 10. I have... Fire Fist. And the reason why I have Fire Fist is because they're still a really good deck, generates a lot of resources. And, you know, whenever I go to locals or some tournament, I will see, you know, a couple of Fire Fist players that are like, you know what, I got Triple Spirit. You know, I can do, I got that Horse Prince combo, you are about to get it. So, um, out of all the decks, you know, I definitely, I was like, you know what, what's, what's, the, what's the most rogue deck? Yet I can still see people entering at a tournament, and I was like, Fire Fist, Fire Fist, you know. So, uh, I'm going to have to get Fire Fist number 10. Not very high up there, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw maybe, like, one or two Fire Fist players playing in, like, a tournament of, like, a thousand. So, anyway, moving on to number 9. I have to give it to the antithesis of Fire Fist, the counterpart, Mermels. Yes, you know, you remember that Water Fire format where it was, like, Fire Fist and Mermels and they butted heads and it was Water Fire format, yeah. So, uh, number nine, I'm going to have to give it to a Mermel. So, Mermels, of course, they got their two Dragoons. And, you know what, I think that's going to be totally enough incentive to people to go ahead and pick up Mermels. And you act like Mermels are bad. You know, Mermels are not bad. You know, they've just been slowly getting all their cards back. And, you know, I mean, sure, you lost your uh, title, which sucks. But we gave you another Dragoons, you know. You still had, you know, your triple uh, Neptibus and... Uh, you, you just have, you have a, oh, well, not Neptibus, I don't, what am I thinking, I'm thinking about, who am I thinking about, I don't even know what Mermel I'm thinking about, Gaia, no, not Gaia, what is his name, the, the, the 1700 one that searches, I forgot his name, oh my god, uh, Megalo and, I forgot his name, Turtle one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what a terrible video. I forgot his name. Damn. It's been a cool minute since I looked at Mermels. Anyway, you know, they still got triple them. He's not even hit like in the others in the OCG. You got triple gun. You got triple land. You, you know, the deck, you know, besides title, you know, you're okay, you know. Oh, I guess you only have one Diva too, but still. I think I think the Dragons going up to two will be enough incentive for people to go ahead and pick up Mermels again. Like I said, it's always been sitting there as a tier two deck, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in a tier two spot on this list and uh, see what people do with it. So that is my number nine. So moving on to number eight, I am going to have to say, you send you, yes, you send you. Uh, you know, so people still play that, and you know, out of the tier two decks, that's more of the closer ones that I see people actually getting close to topping with. You know, taking it. Uh, of course, um, you know, lose one turn was not hit surprisingly. So. Uh, you know, Senju can still go ahead and play that card, which is very powerful. It's a very stun-based deck, lots of floodgates, and, you know, I definitely think they can still do it. So I'm definitely going to say Senju as deck number 8. Alright, so I'm moving on to deck number 7. I'm going to have to give it to Heroes. Yes, Heroes. Uh, you know, with Heroes, seems like they topped, like, at least once every, uh, every uh, Nationals. And, uh, you know, they didn't really get hit. They didn't get hit at all. So, you know, I mean, they kind of lost their bubble chain, which is eh, eh. But, you know, I definitely think that people are going to still play heroes. Uh, the Dark Law is power. Uh, they didn't know they didn't free Nigga Shadow. Sorry. But, you know, I definitely think that heroes will uh, still come through. And uh, I would definitely have to go ahead and give them deck number seven. Alright, so now since we've got those kind of rogue ones out of the way, it's definitely time to go ahead and get to the top six. And, you know, there's not much change because, you know, with that, you know, minuscule little uh, ban list, there's not much change from the top six. So, starting off, I'm going to go ahead and say number six. I'm going to say Ritual Beast. And um, I wanted to put up Ritual Beast higher, but then I was just like, you know what, I really, I, I can't, I can't. Because then I really sit down and think about it. Yes, Ritual Beast are nice. Yes, they did really well in the national, but... 
they just don't have the popularity to be the you know you know it just seems like more people would go ahead and play these other decks and I'm you know I'm I'm definitely basing off of popularity as well how many people are going to play it. and while uh, you know Ritual Beast did really well you know really well a lot better than uh, I thought they were going to do in uh, nationals they didn't win Mega Capital G but you know it did really well so I was like ah I want I really I wanted to put them in like spot number four but I just couldn't I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So, definitely spot number six. Anyway, moving on to spot number five, I'm going to have to say Teller Knights. Yes, uh, Tellers are good, but they're starting to fall out of favor. You know, it seems like all the rest of the decks are kind of passing them up. And, you know, you know they thought they were going to get like a jump start with uh, with uh, with uh, with the Star Seraph combo. But, you know, Shirtles kind of took that one over as well. And it just seems like they kind of just fell off, you know. So... Maybe they'll go ahead and find their spark, but it just seems like, you know, they're just losing it. They're, losing, they're slowly falling. Alright, next, moving on to number four, I'm going to have to say Shadal's. You know, Shadal's still really good deck, completely untouched, just like all the other top decks. And uh, it's actually kind of interesting that, you know, that, that so much went unhit that... It's still things are pretty much the same. So of course, with it winning the European Nationals and uh, you know people still playing them triple constructs and all that good stuff, Chadols, I definitely say I was gonna go ahead and put them up above Teller Knights just because it seems they'd be a little bit more popular. Uh, you know, it seems like a lot of people are you know moving out their uh, their Teller Knights, uh, well keeping their Teller Knights for the ARG tournament. Watch it all, you know, they're kind of probably going to get rid of them from the ARG tournaments and, you know, bring them over to the Konami tournament. So, I think that should also probably going to go up in popularity, at least, and, you know, with them winning the European Nationals, I had to give them that spot number four. So, moving on to spot number three, I'm going to have to say Burning Abyss. You know, Burning Abyss, uh, winning, of course, uh, the American Nationals. Still a really good deck, you know, I, not my cup of tea. Dante Mills a little bit too much for my taste. But, uh, you know, with the high trap count, the fire lakes, the, the floatiness, and of course, because nothing got hit, no graph, no serve. So, you know, the deck is still just as good as ever. So, uh, definitely still have to get that deck number three. So, moving on, deck number two. So, you guys probably might be like, all right, there's, no, there's number one deck and number two deck. You guys are probably guessing which one I put which. I'm going to go ahead and say deck number two. I'm going to have to say... Cleese, yes, Cleese are deck number two. Uh, you know, with lose one turn, still staying at three. With uh, the tower turbos, with wavering eyes, uh, Cleese are probably going to shoot up in popularity. And uh, I, I put them before Burning Abyss because Burning Abyss matchup used to be pretty bad for Cleese. I must say, it used to be pretty bad. But everything seems with like like wavering eyes. It seems like uh, Cleese and you know that tower turbo. It seems like Cleese will probably be able to outbeat Burning Abyss, you know. And with Tower Turbos, if Cleese go first and they bust out that Towers, Burning Abyss, you lose. That's it. That's it. GG. There's nothing in your deck that you can do to freaking handle that Towers, and that's pretty much the game. And, you know, one of your best cards to use against uh, Burning Abyss was, uh, of course, Fire Lake. Fire Lake, their uh, Pendulum Scales destroy them, but, you know, they got Wavering Eyes. Go ahead and chain that and uh, get their search on, so... Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to say that Cleese are going to be stronger than Burning Abyss, this format. And deck number one. I bet you guys couldn't guess what deck number one is. Yes, Necros, still. Like I said, even with your, you know, your Dejin Lock band, you didn't need it. You know, it just made things easier for you. That's like saying that Necros needed the Dejin Lock to do well is like saying that Cleese need towers to do well. Like, no, that's not true. Does it help? Yes. But did it make them, you know, the powerhouse that they were? No, it just allowed them to beat, you know, win a couple of duels, take out the road matchup, you know. But, uh, Necros, you only got one hit, you know. Um, you got a uh, Shrit down to one. And the next thing is, I kind of called that, you know, when I did my video. I was like, you know what would be interesting? If Shrit went down to one, because Shrit is really good. It's a really good card. Yes, it is. You know, being counted as the whole tribute, being able to search for a warrior, it is a great card. And it, it would have been a great hit at one. If only you put Unicorn down to one, too. Because, of course, Unicorn is still at three, which means you can just go Unicorn, pitch, and grab back your Shrit, and then use that as a tribute again, search for another warrior. So, uh, like I said, it wasn't the best of hits. Like I said, you needed more. You needed more. You know, just hitting one card in Necros is not enough for them to be dethroned at all. So, 
you know, they still got their Trish, they still got Triple Menju, Triple Senju, uh, Triple Unicorn, two Brios, which I'm surprised that didn't go down to one, all their mirrors, like, they, they are still just the best, and, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, I'd say maybe their Klee matchup is going to be a little bit more difficult with the, with the Tower Turbo card because now since the Jin Lock is banned, everybody's going to remove their Jin Lock answers. So one of their Jin Lock answers, of course, for the Mirror match was the Scythe Armor. So uh, they'll probably go ahead and remove the Scythe Armor, especially with Shriot dropping down to one. It's going to be a little bit harder to summon. So, you know, I, they, they're not really one of the decks that want to control the battle phase like that. They're probably going to take out the Decisive Armor, you know, the Klee player is going to, you know, first turn you with that Tower Turbo, and that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote, so, uh, you know, uh, hopefully Necros uh, be wise and see what Klee's are planning and, you know, see that Klee's are coming after that top spot and keep them in the size of armors in because they don't, then, uh. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think about my top 10 list, and go ahead in the comment section below, tell me what your top 10 list is. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I wish the list was better. I wish they did more because this, this list is just, ugh, you know. I get it. It's the world's list. And it's pretty much like how that was last time. It was like, yeah, it's the world's list, you know. Worlds, I think, is like, what, August 15th, 16th. We got less than a month for Worlds. So uh, hopefully after that, and like I said, with Konami not uh, putting an end date, hopefully uh, the, the end date will literally be like Worlds, you know, uh, right after that, bam, here's a new list, you know, here's a new updated list right there, so hopefully we don't have to wait until, until like, September or October, you know, waiting our usual three months, you know, with Konami not putting an end date, you know, maybe, of course, the band list will probably be later than we expect, but maybe, hopefully, it'll be a little bit earlier, so, you know, I definitely think next list is going to be a big one, next one is going to be the one that shakes things up, but for right now, you know, Revolver Chain Band, you know, not only is they, you know, preparing for the 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 chicken race. I mean, well, not the chicken race. They didn't prepare for that for all. The Clown Blade, of course. Like, preparing, preparing for combat, but uh, like a lot of people are saying, uh, you know, with the Level Chain being that kind of roguish card, you know, you know, Level Chain busted in Worlds last time and took it by storm, you know. It took a deck of, like, you know, Infernity, and with a level chain and some soul charges, it took a deck like that, who really wasn't relevant, and took it to the top, and I, and then it got hit, of course, because you win worlds, you get hit, you get hit, so, you know, to prevent that, and, you know, uh, hopefully not allow another lower tier, not relevant deck, to just simply just, you know, have a level level chain carry them, and get that deck hit, and the level chain stay, I guess, they're like, you know, let's just go ahead and hit the level chain, and I think, you know, maybe, maybe they listen to the pair, some of the player base, whining about the level chain so you know maybe they looked at arg so there you go level chain banned um i don't think necros are gonna do anything at worlds like so um you know maybe they'll go ahead and hit necros one more time uh in the next list but you know i don't think they're gonna win worlds <laughs> i don't think they're gonna show up i mean remember our list combined so not only do you have one shit but then you have one brio one unicorn one cycle like uh, I mean, I don't know, two Manju, so, I don't know, I don't know, so, maybe not. Cleese, I think, I think Cleese might win it, I really do, you know, with, uh, you know, with the Tower Turbo, and when you look at OCG in comparison to TCG when it comes to Klee related stuff, we are actually, in TCG, are actually the harder hit, because Cleese and TCG, we only have one skill drain. OCG, they have three still, so, besides that, Everything is the same. So literally, you know, if a Klee player could literally take their deck here in TCG, take it to Worlds, and then no changes, no hits, nothing. Of course, Burning Abyss can't show up. That's a TCG exclusive deck. The dolls ain't showing up. I mean, they're just they're destroyed over an OCG. So that ain't happening. So Teller Knights, I mean, they didn't get hit here, so still untouched. And in the OCG, they got one Rota, one Rota. So you know, maybe. Uh, it might be able to do something. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, Ritual Beast 2, you know, I'd probably say, please, so tell her it's Ritual Beast. I can definitely see them decks doing something at Worlds. And, you know, depending on whoever wins will get hit. So, you know. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done talking. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think about my list. And go ahead and comment your list in the comment section below. So, there you go. Top 10 decks. Not much has changed. Not much has changed. This list sucks. It sucked the big one. I'm very disappointed, you know. Like, 
And, and, and keep in mind, this is coming from a person who I have both Telonites and Klees. But before I'm a Telonite player and before I'm a Klee player, I am a very conservative Yu-Gi-Oh player. And I would rather see hits than no hits at all. Especially when you go ahead and slap the shit out of my lower tier fucking 64, 69 Ubel deck because you banned my damn Lavalva chain, which I really needed for my Ubel decks, keep in mind, you know? So, anyway, that's, that's another topic. Anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and uh, I will see you guys next list and next time I do one of these next format. Hopefully, this list changes a little bit more. Alright, people, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.